Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be restoring this badly damaged Samsung Galaxy Note 8. The screen has suffered a large impact on the right hand side of the screen, causing the OLED screen to flicker and glitch out. The back of the phone is also cracked and in need of replacement. The phone's internal components appear to be functional, however, given the state of the display, this phone cannot be used in its current state. But before we get started, I'd like to thank iFixit for sponsoring this video. Get parts, tools, and guides at ifixit.com slash or at the link below. Coming back to the Galaxy Note 8, I purchased this phone off of eBay for a total cost of $101. Now, I've seen similar Galaxy Note 8 phones with cracked displays go for upwards of $200, which I honestly believe is a little bit overpriced considering how much replacement display panels are for Galaxy phones. Inside, I've got a Galaxy Note 8. I got a free case as well as a USB-C charger, a pair of unopened headphones, a USB-C to USB type A adapter, and something else which I assume is for the headphones. Plugging in the phone, I was able to set it up and it wasn't Google locked or locked to any Samsung account. It was a little bit hard to set up the device given I couldn't see the display. The touch does work, however, I found it a little bit easier to navigate around with the S Pen. Once it's all set up, you can just see how bad this display can get. It's flickering green all over with black lines and white stripes and all kinds of funny things are going on. You can see just how slow the refresh rate is when it's in this sort of glitched out state. To repair this Note 8, I've got a used replacement Galaxy Note 8 screen from iFixit, as well as a new back panel and battery, which I sourced out online. Now to actually open the device, I'm going to need to soften the adhesive. Now I started with iFixit's I open a tool um, and I recommend wearing safety goggles when you're taking the back off of a Samsung because if the glass shatters you obviously have a risk of it going into your eye so always wear eye protection when working on glass phones. After having some difficulty getting into the phone I pulled out my hot air station to help with the job. Now I recommend using a suction cup whilst uh, trying to remove the back panel. This will just reduce the risk of cracking it but also make it a lot easier to lift up on the back panel, which of course I didn't think of doing when I was working on this Galaxy Note 8 a few weeks ago. Since then I've tried it on a couple of phones and I must say that using a suction cup is the way to go. And basically I need to just heat around the edges of the device and slowly work around with some plastic picks to separate the back panel from the housing. Now you want to be very careful because up the top next to that fingerprint reader is of course its cable which needs to be disconnected carefully before you can fully remove the back panel. Once the panel has been removed, I'm going to take off the fingerprint reader from the rear panel. This can be saved for later, but if you do happen to damage it in the removal process, it's not a huge deal as it can be replaced without the need of programming it like on some phones. Once we're inside the phone, we can remove all of the screws holding in place the speaker and wireless charging coil. The good news here is that all these screws are the same size, so whether you organize them out or put them all in one pile, you shouldn't damage anything when you screw the phone back together. But once we remove this, there are some screws inside that have different lengths, so it's always best to organize the screws out in the order that they were removed in. All the screws inside of this phone are Phillips, so you really just need a nice quality Phillips screwdriver like the ones in my iFixit Protect toolkit. Once we've got that out of the way, it's time to unplug every connector I can see so we can get this mainboard out of the phone. There's also one screw up the top securing it into place. We'll also need to make sure to remove the SIM card so we can fully remove the board from the phone. Once the main board is removed, this will give us access to a few other smaller components inside the phone we'll need to transfer across. The sensor up near the earpiece will be removed then we can start working on the dock connector portion and remove a couple of screws. This will free up the dock connector and headphone jack, which we'll need to pull out and transfer across to our new housing. If you only purchase the display without the frame included, then you wouldn't need to do this as you would only have to remove the front display and then install the new one. But as I've got a used display to put on this, it comes with the frame already attached. I can remove the vibrate motor and take out the S Pen and we've successfully disassembled everything we need out of the Note 8. So now it's time to crack out my replacement parts. 
The first one, and the most important, is of course the replacement display and frame. Now this is a B-grade stock used Galaxy Note 8 panel from iFixit. This means the display has been pulled off of a phone. I have no idea whether the phone was functional or not when it was removed, but the screen itself only has some light scratches, and this way can be an awesome way to take if you want to save some cash on a replacement display, given that the OLED panels for many Android phones and even the iPhones now are very expensive. Once we've transferred all of the minor components back into the new frame and screen, it's time to put in that main board and test down our phone. I'll start by connecting up the dock connector and the antennas coming from it, and then I can plug in the display connections for both the display itself and the S Pen support, as well as the S Pen holder. I can then reinstall the front facing cameras, install the one screw securing the main board in place, and put the speaker back in. Next I'm going to clean up the old adhesive from where the battery would have been installed, and install some fresh stuff. Now it would have been nice if the replacement adhesive for the battery was already included with the frame, but as it's not, I'll need to install my own. While it doesn't look as good as the original stuff, it's definitely going to keep the battery in place, which really is all that matters. I can slide in my new replacement battery and press it down into place, and finally, reinstall the wireless charging coil portion of the phone. Flipping it over, we can give it a first test. I plugged it in to see if it would charge, and it showed up with the charging flat symbol, but then unfortunately came up with this temperature warning and didn't want to charge. I did get the phone to boot up without it being connected, but still it seemed to have some difficulty charging. Now given that it is a charging issue, it's likely related to the dock connector on the phone. So I did a nice and obvious diagnostic test, which was unplugging and plugging in the dock connector again, and hopefully that'll fix our issue. Reassembling the phone, I can give it another test. And as you can see now, the phone is charging and operating correctly. You can also see the replacement display is functioning great. However, after running some tests on the device, I noticed this cross up in the corner. The device itself wasn't connecting to my computer and going into the About section, the IMEI number is blank and this results in the SIM card not being detected and the phone not being able to make a phone call. The software update portion of the phone also fails and I believe that is due to the unknown IMEI number. I have never come across such a strange issue, but I'm going to try and diagnose it and find out what's causing it. To start, I'm going to just take out the mainboard and reinstall it into the old screen. This will just tell me whether or not there is a screen incompatibility. The reason I think this is because the United States Samsung phones have different processes than the international version. I ran into a similar issue with two Galaxy S4s and they had different model numbers and switching the displays between the two units caused major issues. Putting it back into the old screen, I noticed that it still had the cross in the corner. However, the IMEI returned and shortly after, so did my signal. So was it the display that was causing the issue? Well, not quite. I decided to reattach the main board back into the new screen because we know I haven't damaged the device itself. So it seems to be something in the other frame. This is where I turned my attention to the dock connector. As it wasn't connecting to my computer and there is various antennas for signal, I believe that maybe the dock connector was messing up the phone. One way to test this was either to install a new dock connector or give it another reseat. It's very easy to incorrectly install the dock connector flex cable as it's located on the underneath side of the motherboard. Once I rebooted the phone, I noticed this signal came back straight away and so did my IMEI number. So thankfully it had nothing to do with the display as it was just human error. Now that I know the phone works, I can install the screw holding it in place, reinstall that SIM card tray, and then I can come in with a microfiber cloth and give the inside a wipe down, remove any fingerprints that I might have left in the device, especially ones on the camera lens. Finally, I can reinstall the wireless charging coil, speaker, and install all of the remaining screws holding the whole phone back together. It's also a good idea to test the phone one last time before you seal everything up because once the back is installed it is difficult to remove as it is glued down with adhesive. 
Now I actually had to run around the edge with some alcohol and remove any old adhesive that was left on this frame for when it was last opened. It's also a good idea to give the fingerprint reader a good clean and remove its adhesive so when you attach it, it seats correctly and keeps the device water resistant. A good tip is to connect the fingerprint reader first before you attach the back panel so you don't have to try and connect up the connector when reinstalling the new glass panel. Speaking of the glass panel, I'll need to remove all of its protective films and then I can line it up onto the phone and press it down into place. Once I've got it lined up correctly, I can push it down on all sides, creating a good seal and keeping it in place. Finally, I can remove the plastic film from the back of the phone and we're done. So this is it, a now fully functional Samsung Galaxy Note 8 64 gig in excellent condition. While the display and frame is used, it is in good condition. However, it does have some light scratches that are visible in bright conditions. I also have two Samsung Galaxy Note 7 phones that I'll be restoring very soon as well. As you can see, the Note 8 is significantly different than the Note 7, both in its design and in its battery technology, which is probably for the best. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.